Well, good morning and welcome to worship at Murrayfield on this lovely sunny day here in Bannockburn. A very warm welcome to you as we share in this time of worship today. Our call to worship is from Psalm 34, which says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. So now let's worship God together as we sing the hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne. We have been singing praise to God. Let's continue to praise him as we join together in prayer. Let's pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, as we lift up our voices today, we want to thank you for Jesus, the matchless King, the Lord of life and of love. Because of his perfect life, his sacrificial, triumphant death, and his victorious resurrection, we know the forgiveness of our sin and we rejoice at the life he brings us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that your love withheld nothing from us, not your life, which you gave as a ransom for us, nor your blood, which cleanses us. And may we love you as we are loved as you have given yourself for us, may we give ourselves to you and delight in you as we bring you the praise and worship of humble, glad and grateful hearts. And as we do so, we thank you that as we gather together in worship, that through your Holy Spirit, you are present with us. Would you draw close to us and draw us close to you for we know that this alone is what will truly fill our hearts with joy and peace. And all these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our reading today is from Luke chapter 22, verses 14 to 20. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table with his apostles. He said to them, I have wanted so much to eat this Passover meal with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will never eat it until it is given its full meaning in the kingdom of God. Then Jesus took a cup, gave thanks to God, and said, Take this and share it among yourselves. I tell you that from now on I will not drink this wine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a piece of bread gave thanks to God, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in memory of me. 
In the same way, he gave them the cup after the supper, saying, This cup is God's new covenant, sealed with my blood, which is poured out for you. Memory is a wonderful thing. We all have memories. And if you just take a moment and maybe think of a memory of you and your family, I'm sure that you, your mind will be flooded with, with images. You know, I can see it as though it were yesterday, walking along the promenade uh, overlooking Niagara Falls. It was after 10 o'clock at night and the hot, balmy evening um, the, the spray of the, the mist rising up as the water came cascading down, thundering over the falls. And Elspeth, the children and myself watching the changing colours as the lights changed, uh, shining across those falls. Those memories are, are so clear and so vivid in my mind. But of course we also have memories that are so painful that we'd like to forget them, don't we? But we, we just can't. Uh, maybe a mistake that we made, a, a trial that we had to endure, a loss that we, that we had to go through. These two are part of our history, part of our memory. And then of course there are those um, sacred memories, memories of things that changed your life. I can still remember at the age of 15 getting down on my knees in the vestry in Torrey Church uh, and, and giving my life to Christ. Sacred memory indeed. So what does this have to do with our reading this morning, you might be asking. Well, people don't usually command us to remember them, do they? I mean, they might ask us to remember them and hope uh, that we will, but they don't usually command us, remember me. Nor do they ask us frequently to repeat something in memory of them. But Jesus did, Jesus did. In the upper room with his disciples, as he prepared himself to face the cross, he took bread and he broke it and he gave it, he gave thanks to God, broke it and gave it to them, saying, this is my body which is given for you, do this in memory of me. And make no mistake, this is a command. It's a command of love, but it is a command nonetheless. And the simplicity of the Lord's table, with its bread and its cup, turns our attention to Jesus. And they give us the space and the opportunity to remember him and center our lives on him as he meets with us during that time. We see the bread and we remember his body that is given for you. The bread reminds us really of the suffering that Jesus bore and the wounds that he received 
as the precious Lamb of God, as he suffered on our behalf. He endured the beatings of the soldiers, the cruel crown of thorns that was placed upon his head, and then the cross, the very place that stands as a reminder to us that God judges sin. And if you ever doubt that, then you only need to look to the cross, the place where to add to all that Jesus had already suffered, he bore the judgment of God for sin in his own body. And you know, for all his physical sufferings, Jesus' body wasn't broken by all that it suffered on the way to the cross, not even on the cross with the hammers and the nails. His body was broken under judgment upon the cross, and it was broken for us. The Apostle Peter says Christ himself carried our sins in his body to the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. It is by his wounds you have been healed. And so at the Lord's table as we take the bread and eat it, we share in the cross and all that Jesus accomplished upon it, remembering that it is through his broken body and wounds that we are healed. And we see the cup and we remember his blood poured out for you. All blood is precious in the sight of God. And from the very beginning, the, the shedding of blood had really two things to say to people. Firstly, the shedding of blood was a sign of sacrifice. A life had been taken in the place of another and offered to God as a gift. On the day of Passover, you'll remember back in Exodus, God commanded each family to kill a lamb and to sprinkle its blood on the lintels and doorposts of their homes, telling them that when I see the blood, I will pass over you and will not harm you when I punish the Egyptians. That was on the night of Passover. And on those homes, the homes covered by the blood, no judgment fell because a life had been taken and received and God seeing the blood was the reason they were spared. We kind of get a deeper understanding of this in the progression as we see from the, the, the Day of Atonement when once a year blood was sprinkled on the altar for the forgiveness of sin. Leviticus uh, chapter 17 verse 11 says that the life of every living thing is in the blood. And really that is why the Lord has commanded that all blood be poured out on the altar to take away the people's sins. Blood, which is life, says Leviticus, takes away sins. And Hebrews 9 says, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. And then John in his letter says, de declares to us the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, declares us from all sin, cleanses us from all sin. It's only the blood of Jesus' life, as the perfect Lamb of God, that can cleanse us from all our sin. And no matter how great my sin may be, the power of Jesus' blood is immeasurably greater. Secondly, it was a sign of substitution. When Jesus died the kind of death that he did, he died in our place. And the Bible makes it clear that only someone without sin could become a substitute for those with sin. Apostle Paul tells us that Christ was without sin, but for our sake, God made him share our sin in order that in our union with him, we might share the righteousness of God. He was without sin, and yet he took our sin and its penalty upon himself. It's this gift of Jesus' life being given for us and his blood being shed for us upon the cross that removes the consequences of our sin and brings us back into our right relationship with God. 
And so when you know when I drink this this the small glass of, of of wine or juice by faith, I think of the precious blood that was shed for me. And I remember the past is cancelled, that my sin is gone, that I have been cleansed of my sin, and I have entered into new life in Jesus, that now I'm a child of God who belongs to him now and always. And so the bread and the wine are there to help us remember, to ensure that we never forget what God has done for us in sending Jesus into the world as our Saviour. They draw our mind and our heart closer to him in worship, in humble repentance and in gratitude. I love this quote from St. Ambrose from the fourth century. Ambrose said this, I don't have any grounds on which I can glory in my own works. In fact, I have no grounds at all on which I can boast. Therefore I will glory in Christ. I will glory not because I am righteous, but because I am redeemed. I will glory not because I am free from sins, but because my sins are forgiven me. I will glory not because I have done anything good, nor because someone else has done any good to me. But in this I will glory, Christ as an advocate for me with the Father, and Christ's blood has been shed for me. Jesus' command, do this in memory of me, calls for humility. It tells us that we are acceptable to God, not because of anything we are, or anything we've done, or anything we can yet do. It's not by how good we try to be. It's not even by how much faith we have. And that calls for humility, doesn't it? To recognise that there is nothing that is ours to which we can cling for salvation. Uh, mind went back, remember the hymns of the, the, the words of that old hymn, Rock of Ages, Rock of Ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy riven side which flowed be of sin the double cure. Cleanse me from its guilt and power. Not the labour of my hands can fulfil thy law's demands. Could my zeal no respite know, could my tears forever flow, all for sin could not atone. Thou must save, and thou alone. So nothing in my hands I bring, Simply to the cross I cling. Naked come to thee for dress, Helpless look to thee for grace. Foul I to the fountain fly, Wash me, Saviour, or I die. My friends, we are made acceptable to God, through all Jesus has done for us at Calvary. And Jesus has given us an aid to help us remember. He has given us something we can all do, something that is so simple, so straightforward. We take and we eat the bread, we take and we drink the wine, and we remember him. And as we remember, we humbly accept his sacrifice on our behalf and as we give thanks we give our lives afresh to him God bless you today
We bring our prayers for others before you now. Lord, we lift up our world to you in prayer as we see so much pain and suffering. We pray for all parts of the world suffering from conflict and violence, remembering especially the people of Ukraine and Sudan. May you grant us all compassion and yearning for change so that all your people may live together in peace and harmony. We pray for all those affected by storms, floods and fires, and particularly remember the people of Hawaii, Canada, China and Greece. Give strength and courage to all aid workers who are assisting in disaster areas. We pray for world leaders Grant them wisdom and empathy as they make decisions. Help them recognise the dignity of all people and always seek the common good. Father, bless and heal the world. We remember all those in our community who find themselves in a difficult place. The homeless, unemployed, hungry, sick, depressed and anxious. Lord, may you grant us wisdom and compassion to care for each other. Help us provide practical and emotional support to those we know who are in need at this time. Father, so many people in this world are hurting from cycles of violence, abuse, addiction and crime. Touch those who suffer. Cover them with your protection. Give them assurance of your presence. Father, we thank you for the beauty of your creation. Thank you for our seas, forests, skies, beautiful and fragrant plants, and for all creatures you have placed here on earth. Thank you for the seasons, spring, summer, autumn and winter. Lord, grant us the wisdom to care for the earth and help us to act now to protect the future of your creation. Help us to become instruments of a new creation founded on the covenant of your love. God, there are things happening around us right now that we do not understand. Some of these things make us feel weak helpless and afraid. Even in the midst of this, help us know that you are the Lord. Give us the will to look to your word where our strength comes from. We know that in all situations, we know that all situations are in your hands and we trust you. Today we lift our voices in intercession for your church throughout the world. May your spirit guide and strengthen us, unify us in faith and purpose. 
We pray, Lord, that you will give all Christians a spirit of listening so that we may hear your word and have the courage to put it into practice. In challenging times such as these, help us turn to you as our source of strength and hope. We pray for ourselves. We come before you today seeking your wisdom, strength and encouragement. We know that you are always with us and we trust in your plan for our lives. Help us to remember that we are never alone and that you are always by our side to guide us through whatever challenges we may face. Thank you, Lord, for your love and faithfulness. Help us keep our eyes fixed on you, the source of all faith, hope and love. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. folks thank you for joining with us today and as you go through this week do trust that you know the blessing of God resting upon you 
And for our blessing today, we're going to sing together the song, May God's Blessing Surround You Each Day. 